A warm welcome to another edition of the Magpie Circle podcast. And after having Ricardo Moniz on here a few weeks ago, and that sparked a huge amount of interest among our fan base, um, we've gone back to one of the jewels in the crown of that era, um, Stanley Abora. Um, Stanley, over 40 games for knots. I think it's fair to say you had your, your own fan appreciation society. Some wonderful times, sadly all a little bit too brief. Um, but Stanley, a very warm welcome to the Magpie Circle. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Harry. It's delighted. We're delighted. Um, two weeks ago, we had Ricardo Moniz on here, uh, and he, he was a cult figure. Um, you, of course, know him yes. better than most, don't you? Yes. Yeah. I, but I don't think, unlike most people in um, at North County, I don't really know Ricardo that long. I knew him when uh, I was playing for French Forest. It was the first time uh, I, I met Ricardo. Uh, I think I only played there for about three months. So we had a, a hate-love uh, relationship. Um, he was very harsh on me, I felt uh, at the time, because he expected me to be and do more than the rest. Uh, obviously, he really believed in me. Um, and I thought he was harsher on me than, than he was uh, on the rest of the, the players. So we clashed a few times. And, um, but I always respected him because um, I knew he, he wanted to make me better. And he wanted me to, yeah, to live up to my, my potential. So I, I, I respected him. And even though I left... Um, French virus, I, I, I always had a, a, yeah, how do you say, a, a tremendous amount of respect for him. Um, and I will always do, I think, so he's a great guy. He has a very passionate, engaging character. He loves football. You can kind of just sit and talk football with him for hours. I mean, what, what, what was he like as a manager to you? Um, he was, I, for me, he was a, a, a breath of fresh air compared to other managers because the, the way he manages is not just about, okay, we just train, we, we do uh, the exercises and then uh, in, in, in the weekend, uh, this is how we're gonna play. No, he actually wants to make every player individually better. Uh, and and that, that's, that's it, it's something you don't come across a lot. Uh, for me, it was, was First time I, I met him and, and saw his work, uh, for me that was strange uh, because I wasn't used to it, you know, but I, I liked it instantly. I, I think most of the players like it, but for players who are not used to it, it can come off a bit as crazy and, and you know, it's, it's like, huh, what is this? But for me it was like, he just tries to make everyone better. He wants everyone to be a number 10, Maradona. So that's, that's, that's Ricardo. Some, some of the coaching staff were telling me, uh, Mike Edwards, he said how Ricardo would, would put on old um, tapes of um, Johan Cruyff, you know, the Cruyff turn, Naiskins yeah. from the 70s and all of that. Mm. And, and everyone kind of got sort of bought into his, his enthusiasm. Yeah, he's very enthusiastic. And... and um, I think he started off as a, um, a technical um, trainer. Yeah, uh, skills coach. Yeah, he was at skills, Tottenham. Yeah, skills yeah. coach, yeah. Um, also for PSV uh, before that. Um, yeah, he's very gifted. He could do things that a lot of the players couldn't do. So, for example, he, he would do a, um, an exercise in training and then we had to do it. And a lot of players couldn't do it, but he could just... He could just do it. So he's he's and he's he was still fit. Um, even at, at at that age, he was he was very fit. Um, so I think yeah. a lot of that stemmed right back because he he was friends when he was growing up with um, Will Curver, the Curver coaching, which yeah. is quite famous, yeah. isn't it? He's it a big a advocate of that. Yeah, he takes a lot from him, and uh, I think still up to up to this day, it's it's still uh, alive that that. Um, Will Curver method, method uh, especially in Holland, um, it's something that that they 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 live by. Um, yeah. 
Now, so you'd had a short time with Ricardo Farnsvaros in Hungary, yeah. um, but I think you'd had a stint in, in Kuwait in the Middle East that perhaps didn't work out how you'd wanted it to, yeah. which was kind of the prelude to you coming back or, or to coming to Notts County. W what happened there? Um, I played in Kuwait for, for a year. Um, everything went well. They paid me on time. I had no problems the first year. So after I think about three months, uh, I could go to a club in Dubai and I could go to the, the, the biggest club in, in Kuwait. So they wanted to um, give me a, a new contract. Uh, so I signed it. Uh, it was a lot of money. I, I signed it, uh, extension for two years. Um, after that year, they didn't um, respect that contract. So I didn't hear anything from them anymore. And uh, I actually flew back to, to Kuwait myself. And there I, f I, I found out that they were already in, in training camp uh, in Egypt. Um, so, and they, yeah, they just didn't invite me. So they said I could leave. I said, yeah, no problem, but you still owe me money. And then they said, no, they, they won't do it because I never got the contract back that I signed. Um, yeah, because everything went well the first year. I never thought about that things could go bad the second year, you know, so I just signed a contract and then I think after six, seven months, I said, yeah, they're going to give the contract to me, you know, when I asked about it, um, but they, they never did. And um, yeah, so I was actually without a club. Uh, I just bought a big house um, um, that I suddenly couldn't afford. So I just, yeah, I needed somewhere to, to play. And uh, uh, I spoke to Ricardo and he said, yeah, come here and, and, and play here for, for, for six, six months and then see uh, if you can go, go to, to the championship. So did you, had you come across Notts County at all before? I think you'd had, earlier in your career, you'd had a very short-lived trial at Middlesbrough, hadn't you? Yeah, I got I got injured after the first training. Um, it was was a shame. Uh, Gareth Sargate was a manager there. All right. Yeah, and he liked me. He really liked me. He knew a lot about me. So he called me the day before uh, when I was in the hotel room, and he just started talking about football, and uh, that he knew me, and uh, he had called other people as well, and he heard nothing but, but positive things about me. So. Um, yeah, I was excited. It was like, um, it was a, a trial, but you know, sometimes you have a trial that you really have to prove yourself uh, because they don't know you. And sometimes you have a trial that it's like, just yeah. <laughs> kick a ball straight and you're good. So um, yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, I got injured after, after, yeah, one training. So, so, you, so Ricardo's got you for Notts County you were the I think it was the 14th signing that summer you know and I think as you, you yeah there were a lot of signings yeah may, maybe too many but you were the 14th and you were kind of in England we would say the marquee signing you know the big name to, to, to come in so there was instantly a, a degree of pressure on you I guess um, what, what, your, what were your first impressions of Nottingham Notts County what, what, what did you think of it all when you came here in July uh, for me, personally, I didn't, I, I, I didn't go to, into town that much, so I didn't really see much of, of Nottingham. Um, but, you know, I was happy to be in England. I, I mean, everyone outside of England, I think, wants to go to England. Yeah, because of, the, the, because of the fans, the way the atmosphere, the way they, they live for football, you know, so it's, it's, um, uh, Notts County, I've heard of it, uh, you know, being at that time the, the oldest football club uh, in, in, I think, in the world, isn't it? Or, yeah, we, so, we, we still are, but we call ourselves the oldest professional football club in the world. Yeah. Now we're not in the football league anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, sorry, so uh, I knew a bit about about um, uh, Notts County, but not too much. Um so the first few weeks, um, the thing that stood out is that it felt like a, 
a warm family club. Yes. You know, uh, so that was the first thing that I noticed. It's like, it's it's um, very um, accessible for everyone and uh, approachable. Everyone can come come to you and, and have a chat and and things like that. So that was that was very nice. Um, yeah. So you you and, and as we spoke oh, and also God. also sorry, yes. I Please. felt like the the. I felt I always had a feeling that this club should be much bigger than they are. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's the feeling I always got uh, playing for Notts County. Like, eventually, I I know why it, it, it didn't, you know, why they didn't progress. But at the time, I was like, this club is much bigger than the league they are playing in. That was my feeling, anyway. It, it, it's a very accurate feeling, Stanley. So uh, I'm 57, so I'm old now. Uh, but when I was growing up, so when I was 17, 18, 19, North yeah. County got promoted into the top flight of English football. So when I was 19 years old and a student, I would go yeah. and watch Notts County play at Liverpool, at Manchester yeah. United, wow. at Chelsea, mm -hmm. and win. And win. And we did very well. Um, and the club were always in the top two divisions of English football for something like 15 years. But then they've hit bad time. Over the last two decades, it's been terrible, really, really poor. And so I, I grew up seeing Notts County in the top flight. My son, who's 23, and all his mates that go on the cop, yeah, they've only ever seen Notts County in the bottom two divisions of two English divisions, football. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I still think of Notts County as at least a championship club. Well, but yeah. unfortunately, um, they've been lean times. Um, yeah. But if we focus on that season, so the first game was at Stevenage, which I'm sure you'd never heard of before before you uh, came to England. And it was kind of a everything that Ricardo was trying to put into practice, all the new signings. Well, actually, I think I've heard, I've heard about Stevenage. Or is it? No. No, I think it's Accrington Stanley. That. Is Eckerton Stanley because I remember um, I had a very short um, stint for um, Gillingham. Yes, um, and I think we got whooped <laughs> in seven-one. There, I, I was in the stands. I was just watching and just shaking my head. Like uh, I think Akinfenwa, Akinfenwa yeah. was there as well. Yeah, I, yeah, for us. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we got whooped. <laughs> <laughs> well. So Stevenage, yeah, we've gone there. Win two nil. Uh, I think uh, Amavor got one of the goals, and yeah. we were, everyone was. Can you remember the game? Everyone was very happy, and it, it, it was kind of a great environment and a great performance that day. Yeah, it was because I think obviously the first game everyone is anxious and and because obviously you have played friendly games, but you don't know where the team stands until you play like the first um, uh, first real game. So for us as well, like we didn't know how the game would go. And um, for a lot of players, like the first time in, in, in Eng English football. So, uh, but we played a great game. We played a very, very good game. Um, I think they didn't have maybe one chance they had uh, we were playing on their half, uh, I think, most of the game. Um, and then to, to keep a clean sheet and, and score two goals was, was for the first game was, was very good. It was very good. Three days later, we're in a cup competition. And in England, we like our cup competitions. We had a Huddersfield, mm -hmm. one or two divisions higher. Um, win there as well. It's looking good. Yeah, especially against the championship club. Um, yeah, we, I, I won't say we outplayed them, but they weren't better than us. And they had, I, I don't know if they had their, their first team, uh, like the first squad uh, on the pitch, but I think they had. I think they had like seven or eight players from, yeah. from yeah. And no, we, had, we, we didn't have too many, too many problems with, with them. So that was very good. I think everybody was thinking this might be a great season. <laughs> uh, we were all, hey, uh, me, all of us were thinking great season, absolutely. Um, yeah. 
what was your first impressions of football at this level? Because there's clearly a lot of physicality to it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you obviously have a huge amount of skill. Um, how did you find it? Did it surprise you by how physical it was or not? Or were you kind of expecting it? Um, no, I was expecting it because I think outside of England, everybody knows that English football is very physical and especially the lower leagues. Um, and so I was, I was expecting it. I, I wasn't surprised by anything, but I don't think they are more physical than, than me. So I, I, um, I don't think that for me personally, I would have problems with them being physical because um, I can take it because um, I'm physical as well. Maybe not, I, of course I can play with my feet, but um, I'm strong as well. So I didn't have a problem um, a problem with that. I, I expected it. For me, it was just the, the thing that really surprised me was um, when we played our, I think our third or fourth game that we yeah. lost at home. I think we lost 0-2 against Mansfield. I was going to come to that. Our local yeah. rivals. Yeah. Yeah. That surprised me because although Stevenage played physical and long balls um, like we expected it, um, Mansfield was just a different level. That was a different level. I, you couldn't get close to their midfielders because they wouldn't touch the ball more than once. They wouldn't touch the ball more than once. They would just kick it. Even if, if their striker wasn't there, they would just kick it in the corner and he would just run. Yeah. And that would cause us problems. You understand? Because our defenders, because they are uh, under press, pressure, they would kick it out and then they would have position there. And then, so they, I, I remember with, I was with Jill Swartz and um, Amavor uh, because we lived in the same apartment building. Oh, okay. Yeah. We, so after like, after every game, we just came together for, for a beer. We just talk about what, what just happened in the game and, and things like that. And uh, I remember we came together and we were just looking at each other like, what just happened? What, what kind of game is this? Like, we have never experienced a game like that. Like at least try to play football when you can, but they didn't do that at all. They just kicked it the whole time, kicked it long, 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 long. And I have to say, we weren't, we weren't prepared for that game. Not, not, not in the least. We weren't prepared for that game. Um, I think we could have played an, an hour more I don't think they would have scored any goals, but because I think the last 13, 25 minutes, we were better. We were trying to, to get a goal, but I don't think we would have even scored a goal if you would have played one hour more. So it's a difficult game. It's a very difficult game. They were very physical, obviously, that we expected, but just the way they play was, was horrible. But yeah, fair game to them. They they won it. They won it fair and square. At that level, yeah. Mansfield are, are not on their own in, 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 in that style of football. And down the mm -hmm. years in the lower divisions of English football, you would have managers that would only sign players who were taller than six foot, six yeah. one, six two, because they wanted to play a certain method and a certain way. And there was one famous manager called John Beck who used to grow the grass or leave the grass longer, longer. in the so four corners of the pitch. So everyone yeah. was under all this. The left fullback, diagonal, that corner flag over there. The yeah. right back, long diagonal, aim for that corner flag. And because the, the grass was out. longer. Exactly. And the ball wouldn't roll out. Yeah, and so the centre half, centre forward has to chase after it. Yeah, and the ball holds up, and that and that was his game plan. Yeah, he got a team from the fourth fourth tier to the championship playing that way, wow. Play at Cambridge United, and and quite a lot of clubs followed that model for a while. 
Yeah, I remember I, they, they say, like, if you play good, if you're a silky player, like, can you do it on a rainy night, on a rainy, rainy Tuesday night at the Stoke City or, or something? That's so, yeah, uh, with, with, I think, it's Tony Pulis. Tony like Pulis? To like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I remember. The, the, I think the first time I played against an English team was when I was playing for the Boss. I think it was the championship in Holland. Yes. And uh, we played against Wigan. Wigan, I think, was in Wigan? the Premier yeah. League. Our tallest player was was the shortest player, except yeah. for yeah. they had one player in the middle, and their number 10 who was a good player. I think it was Kumas of Kum Kumas. Jason Kumas, very yeah. good player. Technically a very good player. Yeah, yeah. He, he was the only one that could play... Uh, yeah. For me, football because we dominated that game totally, but we lost two 0 because they were just physically much stronger than 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 our players. So um, yeah, that that was the first time I, I encountered an, an English team, and um, yeah, very physical, very physical. But again, I expected that. I knew it was going to be like that, ex except for the way Mansfield played. That game, that day, that I didn't expect. And I don't think any of the foreign players anyway expected them to, that football could be played in that way. And I understand um, the way, why they are doing it, because if you kick the ball to the corners, you're not in danger of getting a goal against, you understand? And the way it's played in England, the, the the defenders they would just kick it out. Yeah. So then they would have position there. In Holland, they would always try to play back to the goalkeeper and the goalkeepers in Holland they know how to play football as well. So the 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 how do you say it? Um the the, the positive thing about that play wouldn't be positive in, 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 in Holland because you wouldn't get any benefit from from doing that, but in England you would you would get it because they would just kick it out. So yeah, it was was <laughs> was a rude awakening that 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 evening. We'll move on to some of the league games in a minute, but let's just focus on one game that was a reward for beating Huddersfield that we spoke about earlier. Yeah, that was a trip to Aston Villa. So uh, that was a great occasion, and and presumably that would have been one of the the best games highlights for you in your time at Notts County? Um, I think maybe for us as, as a team, but not for me personally, because I was, I think I was responsible for, if I, if I remember correctly, I got a ball. Yeah. And I turned open and I thought it was one of our players. So I played, I played him, but that turned out to be one from Aston Villa and they took the ball and then they scored. Uh, from from that uh, mistake, so uh, me personally, that game I didn't really play very good. I didn't play a bad game as well, but I think for the for the team it was a was a very very good good game. Especially if you see that we played with a lot of attacking minded yeah. players. I mean, I was um, we played with me as a defensive midfielder. Grim Burke was uh, as a um, um, left central attacking midfielder, and then we had John Stead as a right central attacking midfielder. But he had to go up front when we had the ball, yeah. and then come back when we were defending. But in the beginning, it it works a bit, but after a while, the the gap just becomes bigger. So he wouldn't always be back on time. It's not his fault or whatever, but he just couldn't always be back on time. So we, yeah, we played with a lot of attacking-minded players. We played, yeah, we played full for to win the game. So, um, and I think uh, we were unlucky as well. Uh, the penalty, the 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 referee gave was just <laughs> baffling. I was like, no, no, they, they, the the player that that fell down. Um, was it Richardson? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I think it's Richardson. Maybe. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember myself. 
Yeah. Graham Burke got a great goal, I remember. Graham Burke curled one in, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the player that fell down, Richardson, for the penalty, he was looking at me like, I don't know what happened. Uh, he wasn't screaming like, oh, it's a penalty. He just fell down. But I was the one who kicked the ball away, but they gave a penalty anyway. So, yeah, it was unfortunate. I think that that helped them uh, to to win the game because I think we were leading 2-3 yeah, we at, that, at yeah. that moment. So, yeah, it's... Um, was unfortunate but we some we played a great game I think uh, because also we I think our style with Ricardo suited more for yeah. for playing football like that so yeah. when we would find an opposition team that would play football like Aston Villa did then we would play better because th- that was just the way we played you know so uh, I was going to ask you about that because I think one of the challenges Ricardo had was that, and this wasn't his fault, but the club, but he was there for the last five or six games of the previous season and the club lost uh, its spot and was relegated with two got three goals at Gillingham in the last few remember, I remember that game because we were talking about, and I remember following that game because... (laughs) I was talking with Ricardo and he said, yeah, you have to come here. And I looked at the league where Nuss County was and I was like, oh, that's good. They are in League One. So that's yeah. not, you know, it's it's okay. So because I didn't know much about Nuss County. So you were yeah. hoping that they were playing championship, but it wasn't championship. Then you found out it's, it's League One. So you're like, okay, you know, okay. And then you find out they're at the bottom of, of League One. Then you're like, okay. <laughs> so then it, it came to the to the last game. So I was I remember following it with uh, uh, with some friends and and hoping that they wouldn't they wouldn't relegate. So um, I remember they were one nil up. One nil with the two minutes to go. Yeah, and then they eventually. So I was I I, I remember watching it, it was nil 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 and then. They were one nil up, and indeed it was very close to the end. So I was like, ah. So I, I remember going and, and doing other stuff, and then uh, I think one hour later I came back home, and then I was I checked it again, and then I saw they lost. I think two one or three one three something one. like that. Three one. And I was like, how can you like with five minutes to go or something, go from zero one to. Three one, like three goals, maybe one one or maybe flukishly two one, but three one. I was I was surprised, and I was like, "Oh fuck, they are going back." Sorry, can I say fuck? Yeah, it's no problem. <laughs> they 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 are going to to league two. So yeah, I wasn't too happy about that. But Ricardo said, "You know, come on, you you need this anyway." You know, so um, so yeah, I I did it. So. I think one of the consequences of losing at Gillingham was that it then put so much more instant pressure on Ricardo. So he yeah. came in with a new philosophy, signed 14 players, but the reality was he had to get results. However much people bought into a philosophy or whatever in the English game, you know, the promotion relegation, the pyramid is huge. He had to get results. And kind yeah. of some games were brilliant, others not so good. Not so and it was a bit of a patchwork, wasn't it? Up and down. Up and down. Especially away. Um, I think the only game we won uh, until he got sacked was the first game of the Stevenage season. away, that's right. And then we got, I think, three draws. Um, I remember we played 1-1 against Exeter. Yeah, in Exeter. Um, you scored at home to Yeovil, didn't you? Do you remember when we beat Yeovil at home 2 0? Because the home yeah. form was good. The home form was the home good. The home form was good. We played good football. But uh, the thing is, and I think a lot of people forget that, and, and because you lose those games away, yeah. that they think that you played bad. But a lot of the games that we played was just the same thing as we were playing at home. We, we were out playing them. We, in a lot of games, you are playing them, but it, it comes to a degree of, I think, a degree of, 
it's, I, my English is not very good, so it's, it comes to a degree of masculinity. Mm -hmm. You need more manly players to be able to win away games because yeah. away games, uh, the opponent wants to win that game as well. So they're not just going to sit back. Uh, they're going to attack. They're going to just be more in your face than, than uh, in, in home games, um, um, especially with the crowd behind them. So they are going for it. So um, you need a degree of, of, first of all, stability, which I don't think we ever had um, at, at Notts County at that time. Um, the degree of uh, stability, the degree of a bit more mature players. And we had a lot of young players um, um, uh, at that time also. I, uh, Adam Campbell, um, who played, I think, a lot of games yeah. as well. Um, Graham Burke wasn't Graham old. Graham Burke, mm. you had Graham Burke, you had, um, what's his name? Uh, the number 10, Carl, Carl De Silva. You had him yes. as well. Carl De Silva. Uh, you had Curtis, uh, Curtis Thompson, who was, uh, I think, only 20 or 21 yeah. uh, at the time. So, um, although I think Curtis, uh, is, uh, that's a, the thing I had a disagreement uh, on because I didn't always uh, agree with Ricardo on some things. For me, I, I, I thought that he should have played um, Curtis Thompson a lot more. He would have given us, I think, defensively more stability, mm -hmm. a lot of energy. Um, because although I'm good with the ball, um, I'm not an energetic person. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't, the way I am as a person, that's the way I am on the pitch as well. I'm, I'm yeah. very calm and collected. That's that's me. So um, um, so for me, it wouldn't matter much, but it would help me uh, if if that makes sense. Like it wouldn't alter my way of playing if he would play, but mm -hmm. he would help me more, uh, especially defensively, because Ricardo is very um, attacking. Yeah minded you know so in some games i would play alone with uh what's his name uh, liam noble yeah and he's all about attacking not yeah not they will be so sometimes he wouldn't even be in the middle where i'm when we are defending right so it, it's it's um yeah it, it, it was tough because uh, like I said, I, I think Curtis would have helped us m much more than, than Ricardo thought. Um, and, and Curtis um, has done very well for himself because having left Notts, he, um, he's held down a regular place with Wickham, who've been promoted into the championship. They've had yeah, two promotions. I know. I know. We, we sometimes we, 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 uh, we, we still keep contact. So I, I, I know that uh, he's doing very well. Um, I always thought like he was he, for me he was a special player because he's he's almost as strong as me. <laughs> it doesn't like it when I say it. He's not as strong as me, but he's almost as strong as me. So, uh, <laughs> but he's he's he has so much power and energy. Like I'm strong, but I think the 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 power and energy that I give out is just much less than what he does um and and um if 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 he would have played more with me i, I think as a t as a team as a whole we would have we would have uh especially away from home we would have made he would have made a difference uh for us but i mean i played bad games he played bad games so sometimes it doesn't work out like like you wanted to, and and um, yes, yeah, so for managers difficult if he already thinks that he should play somebody else, and then if you don't like um, can turn his mind around uh, in in the one or two games, which is very hard to do if you have to, can only play one or two games, um, then then 
yeah, then it's difficult. Um, I understand every every manager has his own way of thinking. Um, just look at like what you said just said, uh, Jamie Fullerton. Uh, he came in and he wanted to be more defensive, and he didn't like me as a player. Um, that was clear from the beginning. Uh, so then, there's nothing you can do about it. I, I've been through the ups and downs uh, of football. I know how it works. I've seen bad things happen with a lot of players. Uh, I've seen bad things happen with me as well. There's nothing you can do about it if 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 a coach doesn't want you or yeah doesn't doesn't feel that you can fit into his uh, way of of playing. Before we come on to that part of your career at Knotts, um, I guess one of the most difficult games, and I think this this probably didn't help Ricardo get the more lot time he needed to implement his philosophy, was the FA Cup game at Salford, who were then yeah. who were then non league. We we call it non league. They weren't in the football league. Yeah, um, yeah. They they've been bought by the Manchester United legends. Yeah. yeah, it was live on BBC national television on a Friday night. You yeah. know, we've gone up there and... And we made a fool of ourselves, I know. I know. Uh, especially coming off um, a big win against uh, Portsmouth. Yeah. Um, so everybody thought like, hey, maybe things can turn around and uh, uh, we can go up because I think we had two games in hand. And we were seventh. Yeah. So that wasn't that wasn't uh, us, yeah seventh or eleventh something like that. Um, the first thing I have to say is, in the end, after that season, and maybe even the season after, you could you could see that we actually overachieved with Ricardo, instead of underachieved. Um, I think for me that was that was clear to see um at the end of that season. Um, so uh, going back to that game against Stafford, I think yeah, there was a lot of pressure on, on that game. Yeah. Um because of the, everyone in the country watching it on the telly wanted Salford yeah, to win. Yeah. And the weather didn't help and their pitch didn't help as well. Especially for the way we play football. Um yeah. it didn't help. At all, because I think they did something with that pitch, as well. I think they they did they purposely did something with that pitch so that we couldn't play, uh, yeah, the football that we 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 always want to play. And the weather didn't help, so it was, it was you know, that's the the the, the nice thing, the 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 great thing about an FA Cup and and I think all the the national cups is that sometimes. Uh, uh, a lesser team can win from a better team, uh, you know. So that's the charm of, of of an FA Cup. Obviously, when you are that club that is that lost that game um, while everybody expected you to win, then it it, it doesn't feel great, uh, obviously. But I think all the ingredients were there for us to to lose that game. And and what did Ricardo say to everyone after the game in the dressing room? Was he very cut up by it? I didn't think Ricardo himself said something, but I think it was Dave, Dave Kevin, Kevin. Dave Kevin, uh, yeah, yeah. He he was he was pissed, pissed off. Yeah, he was pissed off. Um, but not only him. I, look, it's it's. I think for fans, it always looks like the players don't give a fuck or they don't put in the effort or whatever. I came into that game thinking. I'm going to smash people. We're going to, we're going to play great and we're going to, you know, score some goals. And like I always do, like I always, for me, playing against Aston Villa, obviously it's for a bigger crowd. That's a nice thing about it, but playing that game and I know how it works. I played with Ajax as well. We, 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 we lost with young Ajax, the second team of, of Ajax. I was, I was um, 16 at the time. We lost against, uh, because at that time, uh, the second team of Ajax could play the the cup, the cup okay. but they would start in the in the yeah the the first round, the very first round of of the cup, and 
we lost against uh, a non-league club, which was very bad for Alex, especially yeah, although we are the second team, but we have a lot of talent yeah. uh, in, in, in that team. So we were supposed to, to win easy, but we lost, we lost 2-1. So the media, is, the scrutiny of the media was harsh, harsh. The scrutiny of, of, of uh, the, 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 the coaches, the directors was, was hard. You know, the way they, they, so I know how it, how it goes. You don't want to lose. That's the game that you don't want to lose, especially with the media coverage and everything. Uh, you don't want to lose. So no, I, I, not one player came into that game thinking, oh, I'm going to take a, an off day. Yeah. But sometimes it happened that before you know it, you're not in the game. And they are, and then the fans are behind them, and then they create a chance, and it's look, it looks dangerous, and then you can't even string three passes together, and yeah, and the evening is ruined. And during the game, I felt it. I think after, let's say, 15 minutes, I thought we could be in trouble here. So it's, it's, it's yeah, <laughs> you, some, you just feel it, you know? Um, yeah, and we lost, I think it was 2-0. 2-0, yeah. 2-0. And we had a chance, I think, Adam Campbell for the 1-1. Yeah. Uh, I think he threw ball or something, then somebody tackled the ball past the goalkeeper, and then he just had to run for it. And, 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 just, and I, I think he didn't think there was somebody behind him. Uh, so I think he just relaxed a little bit and then the guy just tackled the ball right in front of his feet. So if, if we would have scored that, that would have changed the game. You know, sometimes football depends on those small moments, but they have a big impact uh, for the game and for, for the morale and, and for, you know, of, of the team. So, yeah, it was, it was unfortunate, but... I think, as a board, these are the moments that you have to stay calm. But football, in, in it's it's a lot about emotions, uh, a lot about um, yeah emotions. Uh, this is a, a bad loss. Uh, we disgraced ourselves in front of of of, of uh, the whole of Britain, yeah? the whole of England. Um, so, so the, a lot of emotions um, um, coming out, and if you make decisions out of emotions, that's when you, when you, I think, get caught in um, in, in in a free fall, like in in because from one bad decision that you make you will make another one and you will make another one and you will make another one and see the way that season ended with what, what, what happened with, with Fullerton, what happened with, um, Mark uh, Cooper replaced him. Mark Cooper. Yeah. Although he stopped the bleeding a bit. Yeah. A bit, you know? Um, so I think as a board, you, you should never react out of emotions. Uh, you should study if if you already think like okay, look, let's have a good look at the manager. Then I think you should take everything in consideration before you make a decision like that. And they don't simply simply as that they don't they just react and then they get stick from the fans and then they feel more pressure and yeah, before you know it, there's a new manager in front of the group and. And then the bad thing about the decision, look, um, I wouldn't say he's a bad manager for Fulton. That's for other people to decide. But for, for the life of me, I cannot understand how you run a football club when you go from Ricardo on one hand yeah. to Fullerton. For me, it means you do not know what you are doing. It means you are just reacting out of emotion again, because you go from, from, from 
one thing to something totally different. And for me, that's what I say. You don't make a decision out of emotion, emotions. And it's a lack of, um, how do you say, a vision, a lack of, um, let me say this word, philosophy. Yeah. Right? Because what's, what's, what's the identity of your club? What do you stand for? Your philosophy will tell you where to go when it's not going well. And obviously, when it's going well, you don't have to change it. You don't ever have to change it unless football progress in, progresses in a way that you have to... Obviously, football progresses in a way that you have to change some things from time to time. Sure. But there was always a, a, a red line and that's your philosophy and that will tell you where to go if it's not going well. So if, if your philosophy is here, you can maybe stray a little bit and then you come back or whatever. But you can't go from your philosophy here like, no, now I'm, no, I'm just going here now. That's, it doesn't work. It never works. It never works. And I, I cannot understand this thing in England where a manager comes in and he will bring his players and the rest that from other managers, from the previous manager, they can just fuck off. Obviously, a manager wants his players. It's, it's normal. It's normal. That's, that's football. It's normal. But a manager should bring in two, three players. Mm, max. Max, that's, that's, that's the Dutch way. That's, I think, the, the Spanish way as well. I think that's a way of just normal thinking football clubs, right? Because what happens when you, 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 you let every manager bring in, bring in his players and you can't get rid of the previous players, you, you end up with Notts County, like having 50 players on, on your, your squad. It, it it doesn't work. It never works. You you should have. I think they they should. First of all, you should have a philosophy. Then you ha you should have somebody. Uh, I would call the the culture guardian. He he he's the one that will always guard your culture, mm -hmm. your philosophy. So he is the one that will bring in the players. And then when a new manager comes in, he will obviously talk to the manager like, look, what do you want? But before he does that, the club already knows what kind of manager he is because he fits right into their philosophy, right? So if, if you think Ricardo is too attacking minded, first thing I would say is, look, the way we are playing at home, it's, it's great. It's great. You're creating a lot of chances. And then I would study why we are losing away. Maybe we are playing it too, too, too attacking. It could be. Maybe it's too attacking. Maybe it's too open. Maybe we're just not, um, how do you say, um, say masculine. Maybe we're not like, we're not too, too much, um, I'm always thinking about the Dutch word, but I obviously <laughs> cannot say it um, in, in English. Um, yeah, you need more, more of, of, of uh, maturity in your squad. And it, it's not always about older players. It, uh, usually the mature players are the older players, but sometimes you have players in, in, in your team that are mature or give you something like I... I I think Curtis Thompson would have given us yeah. that would 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 keep your team afloat. You know when it's it's going well, but also when it's going bad. He will he will always because now it was like good at home games and then away games. Boom, we were we were playing bad or not always playing bad. I think a lot of time we played good. Yeah, but you wouldn't score but they would get chances obviously they are playing home their crowd is behind them and and 
yeah and and they would they would and it's not like we had a we had a great team we didn't have a, have a great team we were just overachieving actually uh, and i think uh, at the end of that season you you you, you saw it plainly that we were overachieving so anyway i'm sorry i'm straying off um no, no. Ricardo lost his job around Christmas New Year. Yeah. How how did you find out? Uh, I think it was Jill Swartz who told me, who texted me saying uh, they sacked Ricardo. What did you think? Well, I think somewhere we, we felt that it was coming, especially after the Salford game. That that when we won against Portsmouth, I was actually very happy for him because the, it solidified, I think, more the idea that we can win against the bigger teams. We we can compete, you know. And we that game, I think, that was a great game for 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 Notts County fans. I think it was a great game for. Portsmouth fans, uh, for neutral fans, because there were two teams that wanted to play football. And and I think they pl we played a fantastic game. I think Portsmouth played a fantastic game because I think for maybe 60% of the game, they were better uh, than us. Uh, but we were more decisive in that 40% 40, 40 of the game. So, um yeah, I was I was very happy for Ricardo because it's I think it's for me it solidified more that the idea that we can compete against these bigger clubs, we just need a, a, a twitch, just small yep. changes here and there in in personnel and and in maybe in winter that would come you know uh, if if it was possible I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, then the Salford, came, uh, Salford game came, and that's the f really the first time that I felt, okay, if we lose another game here, close to that game, yeah. that's it. That's it. And I think the game after that, I think after the, that game, uh, the, the game after Salford, I think that's when he got, was um, it that? Uh, we, we actually we actually had a couple of good performances. Do you remember the Newport game, four three at home, which was a very entertaining game. We won four three, and yeah, so that was good. And I think Ricardo actually lost his job after a draw. It wasn't a defeat, which I think yeah, was yeah, kind it of was surprising. a draw. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was a draw. No, we had we had a lot of great games. I think with Luton Town, we just outplayed them from beginning to end. But I think they came back to. 2-3 or 2-2 or, mm. or two, two. and then eventually we scored another one to win 3-2 yep. yep. that was a I think that was a great game because we played football entertaining a lot of chances attacking you know and um Accrington Stanley at home I think if I remember correctly 1-1 one, one. yes we outplayed them from beginning till the end and then I think they got a corner and Somebody had the ball in, and then it just like a scramble in the like two meters in front of the goal line, yeah. and then their player had a free shot and just smashed. I think past my ear, like this. <laughs> so one one, and <laughs> if you look back at when that's when Ricardo got sacked, that's when I started looking back at those games and think like these games that we we played great also a way that we didn't mm -hmm. win if you could have at least won two or three of them yeah. i think we were we would have been top five yeah or top six with winning just two games just two of those games so you see how how, how thin the line is between mm -hmm. being where you need to be and then sacking your manager and just ruining ruining the whole club with with the next manager you understand a bit what i'm saying yeah i mean when that next manager came in and i think you made a very valid point and i think it's one that 99.9 .9 of all knox county fans would agree with you totally on was that whatever the rights and wrongs of ricardo and the decision on that 
to go from Ricardo over here to yeah. a guy, whoever it is, that's over here is kind of, that's a big leap. And you're thinking, mm, I don't, I, I don't really see leap. that. I don't really see that working. And of it's course, it was immense pressure from the start. Yeah, he, but he did well the first three, three or four games. He, 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 he did. He did. We won. We won. We won. We. I think from the first four games, and this is a something I remember very well because the, things were happening to me at, at that moment. Yeah. Um, we won. Um, we had. We played four games, and three of them, I think, were away games. Yeah. So, he won. Uh, I think Crawley. That was his first game. Crawley, we won one nil, didn't we? Yeah. Then I think we won another away game. And then we played home against Wimbledon and they just outplayed us. Yeah. And that never happened to, to us in that season. Uh, playing a home game and getting outplayed by, by the other team. Um, and they won, I think, Zero two or something like that. Yeah. And then we went away game uh, against Luton, and I think we won that game. I think it was zero three or something, or I, I'm not sure, uh, but we won. We won uh, that game. So from the first four games, he won three of them and three away games as well. The home game he lost. Um, but what was so happening? I think, yeah. Come. Yeah. No, what was please. Happening with you. Because, because clearly, that in a few games, once the club started losing a few games, you were kind of instantly moved out of the team. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I remember um, we played, Ricardo got sacked, and then we played against Oxford with, uh, with the two caretaking managers. Um, yes, we lost um, that one 4-2. Yeah, and rightfully so. They were, they were much better. Um, was for me, um, that was one of the, I think, four or five games that I played um, with two in the middle. Yeah. Like the typical English way, mm. four, four, two. Um, they played the same four, four, two, but they were just much better at playing that for a few reasons um and i played bad that game i i played a bad game um and i think that game i could be wrong but i think fullerton was there to see that game mm -hmm. and i think afterwards when he had this presentation whatever for 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 um the the truce i think um, right. Ray, Ray and Aileen True. I yeah. think he pointed it out that I was a problem because obviously look how he played this game. And you know, I can fair I can I can understand a bit that you would think that, but although I think from one game, how how does that work if, if everybody gets judged so harshly on one game? And I think up to that moment, look, I never reached my normal level at Notts County, never. But I think I did fairly well for a player who didn't play a whole year before that. And for a player who, who came into a competition that, don't forget the tempo in those games, yeah. it's killing. It's killing, it's, it, especially for, for foreign players who are not used to that. Yeah. Uh, but I think from, all the foreign players, I'm the one that was most successful in in yeah in, in the team. Um, but if you look at that game, for me, I don't understand why people would play four four two, not in this era, not in this the way the football is progressing. I, I cannot understand why you would play four four two, because you were playing with two midfielders. So how, how uh, for me, it's like, 
how am I supposed to move? Because I cannot go more as a number 10 when I need to, 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 to get the ball or to, and I can play as a def, more defensive because otherwise he's alone in, in the middle. So it's, it's, for me, it's a strange um, system to play because I always think you, you don't, you, 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 you are missing one extra man. You're missing one extra man. And I played a few games like that. And it, most of the time it went well, but I didn't really play, I think play great or something, but it went, went, went well. But then the Oxford game, they, the way they played, that's how you play that system to perfection. And the way we played it, that, that's when you can see the big flaws in that system. Um, because for starters, our strikers, they weren't allowed to come back. So they had to stay with their central, mid, uh, central defenders. So that's what they did. They just stayed with their central defenders. So the two central midfielders, they had no pressure from the back, from our strikers, right? Now, compare that to their two strikers. Uh, I think it was one is now playing for Rangers. He played for Anderlecht um, last season. Um, Roof. Kamar Roof. Good yeah. player. Good player. Good player, yeah. Good player. So he was playing as a, as a second striker. But what he did was putting pressure on us from the back. So we couldn't really get the ball. And if, you, if we had the ball, there was always pressure from behind us. And we obviously got pressure from um, the, the players, the two midfielders in, in front of us, uh, was Alan Smith and me. So they made it more difficult for us than we made it difficult for them, yeah. right? So in the beginning, when uh, I think this player also is now, he's now playing, I think, in the Premier League, Lundström. Uh, for, yeah. for Sheffield United, yeah. um, he he was playing. He was playing uh, that game as well. He was my opponent uh, beginning. So in the beginning, when he gets the ball, my instinct is to put pressure on him, right? So I put pressure, and he plays the ball between me and yeah, the right back, our right back. Mm -hmm. So I turn around and. The first two times, three times, he, 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 of the first two times he, he did that, I didn't really understand what was going on. So after those two times, I understood that he just, he was, was a left winger that came inside, right? Yeah. So if he comes inside and he gets the ball, because it was dangerous, like two or three times was very dangerous. He just came inside and then he had a free shot or, you know, was, he could give a true ball. So it was dangerous. So when I saw that, I told our right back to follow the man. Yeah, because I got I got angry because I couldn't I couldn't do what I was supposed to. I couldn't go close because when, every time I went close, he would just play between me and the right back, and then the left wing would take the ball, and he had all all sorts of space. So I told the right back to follow him to snuff that danger out. But he's telling me, no, he won't do it. Because in England, he's used to always stay as a back four. Yeah. 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 So for me, that doesn't make sense. It's, it's not, not nothing saying badly about him. Uh, it's just, for me, it doesn't make sense. Why? I'm not used to that. In Holland, I don't even have to tell my right back to do that. He will do it by himself. 